All right, everybody, I am back at Tropical Acres with uh, good news. Lemon meringue mangoes and other mangoes are almost in season. Bad news, bacterial black spot is something we need to be careful with, and this mango actually has it. So I decided to make a video today with Alex, the mango expert, about bacterial black spot, and he's going to talk about that right now. Okay, everybody, we're back at uh, Tropical Acres, and this is a lemon meringue tree. And one of the things that we want to be careful with is bacterial black spot. It's not we can't be careful, but some trees get it. So there's Alex. Uh, he's the owner here and the mango expert. Tell us what you just showed me. Okay. So this mango here is showing some signs of bacterial black spot. So you can see these raised lesions, these black lesions on the fruit, okay? This is different from anthracnose. Anthracnose will cause a sunken lesion and usually doesn't occur on developing mangoes uh, unless they're very small or they're maturing fruit. You know, the time in between while the fruit's developing, anthracnose is usually absent. But this here will occur at any stage of fruit development on mangoes. And it's very destructive. It can, for one thing, these little uh, lesions can cause cracks to open up and split the fruit open. But the other thing being that they allow pathogens besides the bacterial spot to get into the fruit. And so we have these rotting fungi that will get into the fruit from these lesions and destroy the flesh. And so we call that part of it the rot, even though it's uh, really uh, the bacterial spot that allows that fungi to get in in the first place. So um, this can be an issue on lemon meringue. Fortunately, most of our lemon meringue fruit are very clean right now, but it's something to keep an eye on for on other varieties that are more susceptible because some mangoes that are really highly susceptible to bacterial black spot, the whole fruit can be covered in it majority of the fruit in the canopy can get uh, destroyed by it so um, it's a problem you know within South Florida it's a problem in a number of other countries too so, so what do you do with something like that do you when you, do you take that off right now or do you wait until yeah it I mean we should and uh, in fact I'm gonna do that right now but um, fruit like this the the best thing to do is you take it off the tree and you discard it in the trash or destroy it you don't want necessarily leave it around your property because then the pathogen is still there you know? now is the pathogen run from a uh, variety to variety or is it like if you had another variety that's uh that has bacterial black spot or or that could get it mm -hmm. can this tree this variety give it to that variety yeah, absolutely okay. yeah i mean it's something that is specific to mango but as long as it's another mango nearby it can spread it and it spreads from like wind driven rain and we get plenty of that in florida so um you know, and it can you can get lesions in the tree that have an infection with this and that lesion within the tree or on the leaf can spread it to the fruit so so if you have it is there anything people can spray for something like that yeah um, uh, generally the recommendations have been um, co copper bacterial sides uh, they've used those in, in some countries it does require quite a bit of spraying however we've uh, done some experiments with uh, some essential oils uh, garlic has antibacterial spot properties and uh, I think the best thing to do if you're going to try to control it with some kind of spraying is to rotate different uh, products and I think uh, it can be effective on early season fruit. Uh, later season mangoes mature when there's quite a bit of rainfall in Florida um, or at least they often do and that's when it becomes more difficult. Um, I would say, most importantly, you want to keep any infected limbs off the tree, remove any infected fruits that you find, and dispose of them. Uh, that's one of the best ways you can control it within your own property. Obviously, you can't control it being blown in from an adjacent property or you know somebody else's tree uh, elsewhere. So, so it can be on the tree or the mango. It can be either. It can be on both. It can be. It can cause lesions on the leaves as well. Although there's a a strain of it that occurs on the leaves that does not impact the fruit so um, it can be tricky to identify when it's on the leaves as to whether it's the kind that attacks the fruit or not uh, but um, it definitely can occur in the wood as also in addition to the fruit. So now can somebody eat the fruit if it was a ripe fruit and had the black spots that had the bumps is the fruit still It's still edible safe? the problem is that um, it gets that rot that I mentioned and when that rot gets in there um, it destroys the flavor of the mango and even in sections of the mango that don't have the decay from the rot it can impact the flavor of the fruit because the way it it, uh, it ripens it ripens a lot more uh, well pretty pretty quickly 
compared to like a normal mango. It's something uh, from that damage caused by that, that pathogen causes the fruit to ripen real rapidly. And tell us again, the, the raised black bump is yeah. different than the other black bump you were saying. Right, so anthracnose, I mean, we don't have any mangoes that have anthracnose on them right now, but if we did, I could show that as an example, and you could see the difference. So it, it's, it's an important difference because anthracnose, as, even though it will make the fruit look ugly, doesn't necessarily destroy the fruit. Um, this stuff can destroy the fruit. So sometimes you'll get fruit that get bacterial spot and it's no big deal. The, they just have the lesions and there's no rotting fungi in there or the fruit doesn't split open or whatever. But in a lot of other cases, they just end up rotting. So, so if a tree has it, like the one you cut down, uh, can a tree have it for a couple of years and then be okay another year or once uh, it has it? I would it say that some years will be worse than others depending on how much humidity and rainfall there is. But once a tree has it, it's hard to get rid of unless you prune out the limbs that are impacted by it. So if you cut it back and let it come back and it comes back healthy, then sometimes that can resuscitate it. But then there's always the chance of it getting reinfected from some neighboring tree. So my recommendation to people is usually if you don't have a lot of yard space and you're concerned about bacterial spot, like if you're a grower in South Florida and you're worried about it um, impacting you know, your, the trees in your yard, and you only have space for a few trees, don't plant something that's uh, prone to it. Plant something that is resistant. There's quite a few mango varieties that are resistant to bacterial spot, which is probably a subject of a whole nother video. Sure. But um, there's lots of different options for homeowners that are resistant to bacterial spot. And natural resistance is always the best thing. You don't have to do anything to those trees uh, to keep them from getting this disease. Now, so. it wouldn't make sense uh, to top work a tree like this with something that was uh, susceptible to black bacterial black spot, but if you did, considering the tree already had it, can that harm the newer the newer one, or is it still like a brand new tree in a new situation? Um, I mean, if you if you took the tree and you top worked it into an, another variety that's prone to it, you're saying? Yeah. Uh, if the lesions are occurring below the grafts, sure, absolutely. If you've got a disease inoculum on another part of the tree, and you know, it's still present even after you graft it over, then absolutely that can get spread very easily to your new tree. But if you put a resistant variety on it, for example, we did that with several of our trees. We top worked some of our prone mangoes into resistant varieties and almost never saw bacterial spot on the fruit again. So the resistant varieties, even if there's some pathogen nearby or even on the old trunk somewhere, they don't end up uh, getting the fruit affected too much. So. Okay, I know people are going to have this question before we end the video. I notice a lot, and we'll discuss it in another video, but what's the top three most prone mango trees that are, are susceptible to bacterial black spot and the top three that are resistant to it? Uh, okay, good question. Um, okay, so some varieties that are really prone to bacterial black spot, unfortunately, are uh, Kent, Kit, um, I'm going to name more than three, Paul, I'm okay. sorry. Uh, lemon Zest is horribly prone to it, Hatcher. Is another mango that's prone to it um, and Venus is pretty prone to bacterial black spot too and there's a bunch of others that I'm forgetting that we've top worked over the years but uh, it's a long list. Are they crossbred? Is that why they're susceptible? It's, it's usually uh, so what we found is a lot of mangoes that are descended from Brooks are prone to bacterial black spot. Brooks was a mango that itself was a seedling of Totopuri uh, a long time ago uh, like a hundred years ago in Florida and so Kent Kit uh, a few other varieties are descended from it, um, and they're very prone. A lot of the Hayden progeny are also prone to bacterial black spot. Hayden does get it at least at a moderate level, maybe worse than that. So, um, yeah, a lot of stuff with that genetic lineage uh, is prone to bacterial black spot. Um, lots of stuff that's resistant to it, too. Though. So you said uh, something about which ones were the most resistant, yes, right? Okay, yes. so oh, um, Duncan doesn't really get it at all. Um, CAC is extremely resistant to bacterial spot. Glen, I never see bacterial black spot on Glen. Uh, Floragon also uh, highly resistant to bacterial spot. I don't really ever see bacterial spot on that fruit. Um, and then there's a bunch of others. I mean, uh, dot. We have dot trees here. Dot doesn't get bacterial black spot either. So. And is uh, this a newer problem here? It started in 2015, I think. Uh, and I, well, I think it started in. Uh, Boynton Beach area. It probably started on Manalapan uh, or Hypoluxo Island because those were the first people to report it uh, and we had customers coming from those places that 
had all this rotten fruit and stuff, and they didn't know why. And then we started seeing it a couple of years later. Do other so, places in the world have it? Or yeah, is it it's South real America? common in Australia, South Africa. It's common in Southeast Asia. Um, so, But it didn't make it to the Western Hemisphere until pretty recently. So. Okay. Well, everybody, there's some more information to help you make your selections. And uh, it's still a good tree, but you just got to be keep an eye on it, everybody. All right. Thanks a lot, Alex. Thank you. All right. All right, everybody, there it was. Just be cautious, and I hope this information helped you make decisions when you plant a tree and also keep an eye on the tree. And put your comments or questions below the video. Thank you, Alex, and thank you, everybody, for watching, and have a great day.